E. Turner Vantage, your old pal BD back here again with another weekly news announcement. And this is going to be for October 5th and October 12th, 2021. Um, I want to start this video off as saying that I, I know that I've been out for the last three weeks. Um, I actually have several videos I've filmed that I didn't post. Um, if you stay to the end of this video, I will explain everything that was going on. I know I alluded to some stuff in one of my last videos I posted up, but, um, uh, at the very end of this video, if you stay to the very end, uh, there is a, there is an attachment to this video, um, that will explain to you what, what's been going on and what, and how things are going and stuff like that. So if you're curious about it, stay to the end. If you're not, when I say, see ya, you can cut off there and you're not missing anything. So, um, let's start off. So. Today, I'm filming this today. Um, this is the 5th of October. Uh, we do have quite a bit coming out today. We have Halloween's 1 through 5 Shout Factory coming out all in 4K. So that's Halloween, Halloween 2, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, my, one of my favorites. Ha Return of Michael Myers and the Curse of Michael Myers. No, the Curse was Part 6. Yeah. Anyways, Halloween's 1 through 5, 4K, all coming out today by Shout Factory. Personally, I have Halloween, two different versions of Halloween 4K already. The original Halloween, I have a Steelbook 4K and I have a um, um, just a, a standard uh, 4K disc. Um, as for the other ones, I'm not really sure I'm going to get these. I have that really cool Shop Factory box that came out a couple years ago. There's nothing new on these 4K discs that wasn't available in that box set other than the fact that I'm 4K, but I'm happy with the way those look, so probably won't invest in those, but... It's really cool to see them come out. We also have coming out on Blu-ray for the first time, What Lies Beneath and uh, The Time Machine. Um, also this week, today, comes out the Universal uh, Monsters Collection. So Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein coming out in 4K for the first time. And there is Steelbook versions available for these things. So that's pretty exciting. The movie Night Shift, which I talked about before, is coming out today. I uh, love that movie, man. I was just talking to my wife about it a little while ago. Um, also, American Psycho is coming out in 4K. There's a Steelbook coming out. Best Buy Exclusive Steelbook. Um, we have Dead Again coming out in 4K. The Stand is coming out today. Now, this is the stand that uh, was just came out. I want to say it's October of last year. Um, the remake, uh, really good. I really liked it a lot. There's also, there's also a two-pack coming out with the original stand and the remake. Uh, but those come out today. We have uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy coming out today, which I saw was a pretty good movie. It was a lot of fun. That'll be a 4K DVD Blu-ray, and there is an exclusive steelbook for that one. Um, we also have Escape Room, Tournament of Champions coming out today. And then the last one is A Night of Animated Dead. So what that is, it's an animated version of the original Night of Living Dead, which actually looks pretty cool. I wasn't able to read too much up on it, but it looked just an animated movie basically mirroring the original George Romero classic. So um, it looks really cool. I'll get it. I'll eventually, I'll track that down and get that thing because it's just, it's Night of the Living Dead. I'm a massive zombie fan. Not, uh, well, Rob Zombie too, obviously, you know, but of zombies in general, I'm a massive fan. So um, I'll be picking that up. So that's it for this week. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, I think I mentioned too that all those Universal Monster movies are coming out today are all steel books too, right? Best Buy exclusives. Okay, so next week, the 12th, we do have a Glorious Bastards coming out in 4K. Also, there's a steel book coming out of it. Misery is coming out in 4K for the first time. It's being put out by Kino Lober. Um, Columbia Classics box set part two, and I forgot to write down what's in there, but they're, you know, they put that one out a couple years ago. Now, this is the second wave coming out. Um, Arrow Video is releasing Legend Limited Edition, a good movie with Tom Cruise. This is Tom Cruise, like, way back in the day. Um, The Green Knight comes out next week. That's Blu-ray uh, Blu DVD and 4K. Uh, Free Guy comes out next week, and that's Blu-ray DVD 4K, and there is a Best Buy Exclusive so Steelbook on that one. Free Guy, not a bad movie. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, It had some funny scenes in it. It got a little slow for me at, at parts where I kind of felt like I wanted to pick up a little bit, but it was fun. It was enjoyable to watch. I, I did enjoy it. I will be picking it up. Eventually, um, let's see here. Also, next week we have The Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, Black Lightning Season 4 comes out next week, which I believe is the last season of that show. And then also next week, Friday the 13th Steelbook set. So it's Friday the 13th parts 1 through 8 in a Steelbook. In a steelbook. I, I feel like in, 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 it's funny because it's this is Paramount. And it, it's funny that every time I turn around just a couple weeks ago, they re-released Friday the 13th, the first eight movies all on Blu-ray, just in a box set, right? Just a little snapper case box set. And now they're releasing a steelbook of the same movies. They keep releasing these all those over and over again. But, man, had you been able to get on that um, 
the Friday the 13th box that the Shot Factor put out a couple years ago. It's almost a couple years ago now. Or was it the beginning of last year, maybe? Um, it's so much better than what Paramount's releasing. Now, is it a steel book? Sure, it's a steel book. That's really cool. I love steel books. But it's it's funny how they keep just going back to that well over and over again. They're not doing anything new to these movies. It's the same Blu-rays that were out before, but now they're throwing a steel book just I guess because they're trying to capitalize and this is October, you know, this is a scary month. So um yeah, so that's it. So that's it for this week and next week. Um I do want to talk about anything as some stuff was announced. I didn't get I couldn't find a whole lot, but this is what I did find. So announcing wise, they are releasing the Karate Kids one through three and four K in a box set that will be coming out um the seventh of December. Kind of funny how they left the fourth one out. And actually it would be really cool had they had they did some sort of weird thing where like you got the movies plus the Cobra Kai series. You know, that would be really cool. Uh, matter of fact, that actually comes out. Cobra Kai season four comes out in uh I think I want to say it's in December. Uh which would make sense why they're putting the 4Ks out. If you've not seen Cobra Kai, watch it. It is a true pleasure. It is a really fun show to watch. Um, Candyman comes out uh, on the 16th of November. Blu-ray, DVD, 4K. I'm not sure about a steelbook. I'm hoping for a steelbook. I watched that the other night. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really neat. I enjoyed it so much so that the next day I went back and watched the original Candyman and Candyman 2, Farewell to the Flesh. Um, just because it inspired me so much. It was a, I, I really liked the way they did it. I did feel this movie also had a little bit of kind of run on a little bit uh, through a couple parts, but I liked the way they really kind of intertwined the original uh, Candyman and even the sequel into this movie. So I, I thought that was really cool um, that they did that. It was like, and Jordan Peele, man, he does really good movies, really good movies. And this was another one of those really good movies. So highly recommend it uh, coming out. Stillwater, which comes out the 26th of this month, October. That's the uh, Matt Damon movie. Uh, I don't know too much about it. I know it's about Stillwater, but um, what happened there? But I don't know much more about it. Blu-ray and DVD. I did not see a 4K for that one. Um, let's see here. Ticks the movie. So this was interesting. Vinegar Syndrome's releasing this Ticks the movie. Okay, Ticks came out back in the 90s. I remember I worked at a mom and pop video store back in the day. And it's this cheesy movie with one guy from Booze and Buddies, not Tom Hanks, but his buddy. I always forget the guy's name. And I want to say Seth Green was in it, and a couple other people were in it. And it's this cheesy movie about these ticks that end up becoming like this big. They're huge. And they're running around killing people. It's a really cheesy movie. It's It's been on DVD forever. Um, and it, there was a limited Blu-ray release, I think, for it a long time ago. A really long time ago. But it goes for a tremendous amount of money right now. 70 80 100 bucks something like that i've seen some of them go off for but it was really limited it's really hard to find well vinegar syndrome is releasing ticks they've remastered it It'll be, i believe it comes out next month um or actually the 26th i think of this month and so they're releasing it so if you look on ebay now people are trying to get rid of it because it's vinegar syndrome so you know vinegar syndrome is good. they do good stuff they'll add a bunch of extra features a bunch of stuff that that the original blu-ray didn't have even the dvd is hard to get to that stupid thing Matter of fact, I think I think I have it on VHS though, because I didn't even get the DVD. Because I didn't get a DVD is long out of print also. So because I noticed the other day I was looking through, and I got it on VHS. So I probably will buy this. I do like it. It's really cheesy, but it's a lot of fun. Um, but um, it's I, I like when this happens where these movies that have been out of print for a really long time. You know, all of a sudden, one of these studio video syndrome, Severn, whatever, gets a hold of it, and they put out a copy of it. You watch all those people who've been sitting on these copies for years, thinking, "Oh, yeah, I got a gold mine of this thing," and they're not worth anything, or they're not. It's like best example was um, so they put out a, speaking of Friday the Thirteenth, they put out this Friday the Thirteenth box set a few years ago. It goes in a tin and had all the movies, had three D glass stuff like that, and that thing was going for gangbusters. I mean, people were getting like four or five hundred bucks for it, especially with sealed. They were getting a ton of money for it. It was the only way to get all the the Friday the Thirteenth movies together because obviously one through eight are owned by Paramount, but New Line has the rest. So it was a great way, but it went for a ton of money. And then Shout Factory announced. And came out with their definitive Friday the 13th collection, which had all the movies in there. And that tin went down, dumped quick. Like, like everybody was, I, I remember going up on eBay and like everybody was unloading it. People were just like, you know, just come on, buy it off. You bought it off trying to get rid of it. So it's funny when they do that. A lot of times people will go, I got this really movie. It's completely out of print. Yeah, in a few years, somebody's going to re-release it, something else. And it always happens with movies. So what I always say is, like, people always say, well, I collect movies because I'm trying to reinvest and save for my future. And it's like, yeah, not with these. 
movies for me at least anyways is more of a collecting passion it's not like i don't look at there are some movies i do have that are worth quite a bit of money some versions of that movie that will never be available again that are worth quite a bit of money and then as you know like like Shout Factory, their slip covers are high high demand. I have a lot of old school Shout Factory movies that have the slip covers to them that are, you know, that are worth quite a bit. So, um, but overall, I always knew going into this thing that movies, I mean, steelbooks can resell for a decent amount of money. Some other movies can resell for a amount of money, but overall, you're not going to get, you're not going to be making thousands of dollars off selling a movie later on down the road. You're just not. Um, so I've always take I always like this more of this is just my hobby than it is trying to collect and, and then save for a rainy day and sell it all. Do I have other stuff? Yeah, I have a massive Lego collection that's all put away right now. There's my retirement. Um, um so uh, you know, it it it's it's kind of a give and take thing, but you know, it, it I just always find it I chuckle when cause it's happened to me. I've had I've had movies that are like long out of print and I'm I'm like, woohoo, I got it, yeah, 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 I got it. And then I'm, and it's worth quite a bit of money. And I'm like, oh, I'm never going to sell that. And then all of a sudden somebody releases another one. It's like, oh man, it ain't worth what Beastmaster was one. Beastmaster for the longest time was never available on Blu-ray. I had the definitive Anchor Bay, like super special edition of it, you know, and it was worth quite a bit of money because that was the only way to get it was DVD. And then, um, they'd put out a, uh, I want to say uh, overseas somewhere. It was a region free, uh, recent free Blu-ray they put out. It wasn't the best quality, but I'd had that, but it wasn't from the States. It was from the, I can't remember what Spain, I think it was. And then they announced finally when, um, oh gosh, who was it? Vinegar Syndrome or one of those companies had finally announced uh, that it was coming out of Blu-ray in a 4K edition set. And man, that DVD tanked quick. Um, I got the set. I think it's back up where my thumb is right. It's right on there, right where my thumb is. So I remember that. And and I don't ever take offense to it. I'm not somebody that goes, oh, this sucks, man. I paid like, you know, 80 bucks. This thing is rare. And that's one thing. It's, it's kind of the gamble you play with movies. But I just thought, I just think it's kind of funny, you know. Um, so that is it. Um, you will see a lot of videos in the next week or so from me because I had some stuff that had been sitting there for a while. I have a um, a review of a of a... Dollar Tree movie that I bought that I thought looked really good that it'd be in one I think it now ranks uh, might be number one of my all time worst movies so I did do a review of that movie which I'm gonna start doing more just movie reviews I got a lot of requests for those um, also there's a review up that Cobb and I did for Mortal Kombat um, and uh, so that'll be put up I do have a Dollar Tree review yes I did go to the Dollar Tree so there will be a Dollar Tree posting this week you can see what I picked up I went to two different Dollar Trees and I got some good stuff a lot of it other people have already gotten already but for me it was so i will have that coming up and i'm i think there's another video out there too i'm gonna do a star trek tribute video i was gonna do one on the 55th anniversary which is just a couple weeks ago but because of if you stay at the end of the video you'll find out why things happen so i wasn't able to do that so we'll be putting on a star trek tribute video for the 55th anniversary and and to also dispel some of these jerk weeds that think the star the star trek lower decks is terrible when in fact i think it's one of the best star trek shows they've had in a long time so um that is it um thank you so much like subscribe the bell please leave some comments down below everybody take care and be safe out there i am back you will start seeing more regular videos from me again hopefully give me a week or so to kind of get back in the swing of things but you will start seeing regular videos these will be coming out every week again and stuff like that so i'll be pro pushing forward we'll be doing more reviews of Cobb when i can when i can wrestle Cobb down to watch another movie so um be on the lookout for all that stuff thank you again so much for watching please take care always be safe um always keep hunting because honestly you're never just gonna find and as always live long and prosper bye all right guys so into the video i promised you that i would go ahead and tell you what was going on and things like that those of you want to say i, I realize some people are like whatever and i get it you know um so i i have been off uh I have been off YouTube for three, almost four weeks now. I mean, if I do have a video, couple of videos I filmed about a month ago, I saw them posted. But I had told you in one of my last videos that we were, my family was struggling going to some things and uh, which made actually probably the last eight or nine months the reason why my channel has been so chaotic. I haven't done what I've said I was going to do. I've been struggling with a lot of stuff. So in essence, what has happened is that... Uh, a little over eight months ago, my mother-in-law, my second mom, uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Um, it uh, wasn't just in one area. It was in several areas throughout her body, liver, kidneys, lungs, bones, and in her brain. 
Um, they had given us a prospect that she could survive this. She'd have to go through a lot of radiation and chemotherapy treatments, but the doctors all thought she could sur she, she would survive it. Um, we went through seven months of uh, struggles, going back and forth to Stanford University, going to the hospital a lot because she would constantly get sick and and trying to navigate this weird world. You know, she she lived with us and we took care of her because we could she couldn't be on her own anymore. And, and she was on a fixed income. She didn't have a lot of money and nor did we, but you know, we made it work. And, and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law came in and helped out and we took care of her for a really long time. And she fought really hard. She fought every day and she did everything that she could that, that, that she knew how to do. And we took her to her appointments and, but it was, it was, it was, those seven months leading up to this last month were, were hard. You know, they were a lot of doctors. I've seen more inside of hospitals in the last eight months than I think I've seen in my entire life. And, you know, just going back and forth and at the same time have to worry about COVID. I mean, there's so many people out there like COVID's bullshit, COVID's this, COVID's that. But in all honesty, when you're dealing with somebody who's going through chemotherapy and, and radiation treatment, that every time they got out of a every time they got out of one of their treatments, their immune system was so so depressed that we had to be careful because even even though she was vaccinated, if she got COVID, it could have hurt or killed her. You know, we had to be really careful. She had no immune system. I mean, we had to, like, you know, we quarantined basically at home for eight months because none of us wanted to get sick because she was so sick that, you know, even the most simplest of colds could have really hurt her. So, you know, we, we did everything we could and, try everything we can beyond frustration a lot of times with the world and society and people because people just don't understand what why why people are fighting to have face masks on and fighting to get people vaccinated it's because there's a lot of people in this world that are really susceptible that can can get sick really quickly because of this thing and you know it's 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 about us protecting the whole not the individual the needs of the many I'm going to quote Star Trek here the needs of the many always outweigh the needs of the few or the one always do and so we fought really hard. We did everything we could for several months. And then a little over a month ago, she actually about six weeks ago, I would say she started having memory problems and she started having uh, like simple functions she couldn't do anymore. She really struggled. There's an example of her phone was ringing and she looked at her. My, my brother-in-law was like, why is my, why is my phone making this noise? And my brother like, mom, your phone's ringing. She's like, what? she started to have a lot of memory problems and it was, it was really scary. You know, it, it's almost felt like she had Alzheimer's sometimes, even though she didn't. And, um, <clears throat> because of the spots on her brain and because of the spots throughout the rest of her body, you know, she just, it was just crushing her. And about, oh gosh, what is it now? Two, four weeks ago, the, her, her, um, oncology doctor had said, why don't you come in? Because she was struggling eating. She couldn't eat. She couldn't, uh, drink water very much. She was really struggling. She just couldn't do anything. She was in so much pain because she ended up getting another spot up, up underneath her ribs. And it was pushing so bad. It was creating this intense amount of pain that she couldn't handle. I've never seen anybody in that much pain before in my life. Um, they tried to bring her in. They were going to do some radiation on that one spot to see if they could reduce the, 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 the spot there and stuff like that. And, uh, when, when we got her to the, the doctor's office, they tried to rehydrate her, but she just couldn't. So they sent her over to the, uh, the hospital. And at the hospital, um, what we were told was we, she could beat this at the hospital. She was told that she only had six months to a year to live. Um, that devastated, obviously, all of us. Uh, it was not what we were told. Um, her oncology doctor had been telling us all along that she could beat this. We went to extra lengths and did things that my mother-in-law would have never done had she known ahead of time that she wasn't going to survive this. We found out later on the doctor knew that she wasn't going to survive this, but they were telling her she was to keep her hopes up, apparently. So, um, which sucks because my mother-in-law would have put herself through all the stuff that she did the last eight months if she knew she wasn't going to make it. Um... So we took her to the hospital. They got her in there. They started hooking her up. They were trying to stabilize her again because she was supposed to come home, but they, could just, they couldn't get her stabilized. They couldn't get her to eat. They couldn't get her to, to, to drink stuff. They were pumping her full of fluids and everything else they could pump her to, but it just seemed like every day she just just couldn't bounce back. And in, in, in that two-week period, she went from literally being told uh, on the first day that she had six months to a year to live. And then over the course of those two weeks, it went from six months to a year to six months, to a few months, to a few weeks, to a few days, 
to a few hours in the span of two weeks. It was, it felt like every, every point, every time we woke up it was like, we got more bad news. Um, we got to the point where, uh, they get the doc, the hospital called us and said, you better get down here now. She's not going to last very much longer. And so obviously we dropped everything. We drove to the hospital, um, because of COVID we weren't allowed to be with her. Um, they allowed like my wife and her brother to be up there, um, which was, we had to fight for that. Um, they were only gonna let one of us to be with her, which because of COVID, because of the restrictions, and I understand the restrictions, but you understand why I was getting upset with anti-vaxxers at this point. Cause it's like, if, if we got this thing out of control, myself and especially my wife and her brother and sister could have been with their mother when she died. Um, We got there. She lasted a couple more days. She held on really hot, really strong. She she tried. She fought. She fought, but she just couldn't make it. And she died laying next to my wife. Um, my wife had fallen asleep in a chair next to her, holding her hand, and she passed away. Sorry. She was only sixty years old. She had so much life left to give. She had so many more things that she wanted to do. Things that she wanted to see. And, you know, it's life. Uh, this, these things happen, you know. Um, one day you're here, the next day you're not. My dad was the same way. My dad had hepatitis C, which most of you hopefully know now that we have a cure for hepatitis C. But when my dad had gotten it, there wasn't a cure yet. They, they had told him, you know, you've got six months to a year before you need a transplant and do a, a, a liver transplant. And uh, two weeks later, he was gone. So you just don't know how much time you have. So, you know, it, uh, it's taken a big toll on my family. Extremely big toll. Um, we uh, have been really struggling. Um, I do want to say at this point, because we didn't have any money, we had spent everything we had to keep her keep her going we didn't really have any money left and i want to say a personal thank you to the 20 people that donated to our gofundme you guys made it possible for us to to be able to take care of her after her passing take care of the funeral arrangements get the cremation stuff set away and i want to thank you guys for that those people that donated um you helped us out more than you guys know and so we really, really do appreciate that. Um, I'm a big, I, I always talk smack about GoFundMe, but um, I just thought it was always a way for people to do a cash grab. I can't tell you how many times I've seen videos of people that like, were, I'm going to use COVID again since it's such a big topic, but talking trash about COVID and how it's, the wor it's so stupid, you're an idiot to get the vaccine. They go through this, all this mumbo jumbo stuff like that, and then they get it and they die, and then their family immediately goes to GoFundMe, and it's like, but if you would just take it seriously and not call it a joke to begin with, you know, so I've always kind of thought like, it's like, oh, I, it's, but it's one of those things for people that just, you know, I almost felt like sometimes like they're just trying to make a money grab, you know, but it's not, um, everybody help. so many people help us out. My family helped us out. Um, you know, my mom and my aunt, my two aunts that have cancer donated, gave us money for, for, um, to help us, you know, um, cousins that I haven't seen in years gave us money. Um, my, uh, not only my brother, obviously my brother and his wife helped us, but her mother, my, my, my sister-in-law's, you know, mother helped us. And some of our friends, some of our really good friends, people I hadn't talked to in years had, had helped us. And I, I can't thank you guys all enough for that. It, you helped us and it, it was the only shining light we had at the time. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, so you know, uh, I don't know. This is just, I know this is how things go. And this is what happens. Um, I want to dedicate this video to Mama Pam. I miss you. I know you're in heaven. I know you are. We're all doing fine down here. And we will see you again someday. Love you, Mama Pam.